by St. John's down there. The whole parking lot was full of cars. We hardly have any cars in our parking lot. I thought, I wonder if the pastors told the people there that they're full of unclean spirits. I wonder if he says, come out, you've got unclean spirits in the main part of the morning worship of St. John's Presbyterian. Anyway, so listen, friends. It's getting more and more exciting. It's getting more and more challenging. It's getting uh, maybe a little more difficult. Um, if you are a cursory threat to the enemy, you get a cursory resistance. The deeper the threat you are, the greater the threat you are, the more you will understand the power to oppose. So why do you think the kingdom of darkness has lasted for 2,000 years after the Savior has come? Anyway, so we're going to just look at some very um, So, um, let's just go to Matthew 6, 9, which is the Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6, 9. 6 and 9. Pray then in this way, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive, um, as we have forgiven our debtors. And, and it goes on. The part that I want to look at says, um, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, if in fact the Lord wrote this, his instruction to us is to pray that the kingdom of heaven will come to earth. And as the kingdom of heaven comes to earth, the Lord's will will be done on the earth. There would be people who would say the kingdom of heaven is already on earth. There would be some people who would say the kingdom of heaven has not come yet and it will not come until the sky cracks and Jesus appears. My own theology is this. The Lord Jesus says very carefully, the comforter cannot come until I go. We would want to say, Lord, why, don't, why, why can't we just have both of you? Let's have the Lord and let's have the Spirit. He says it can't happen. Is it because our Father is stingy? Is it because our Father can't figure it out? Is it because we don't deserve both? I prayed over that a long time. And this is the conclusion that I came to and I felt like it was a word from the Lord. The Lord Jesus came in the flesh. He was a man. He was not a God-man. He wasn't a Morphodite. He wasn't half God, half man. He was our brother. Full pedigree. But with no darkness in him. Those who lived at that time knew him, loved him, related to him like a brother. He then says, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So the one that we knew... He's not going to go and send another. He says, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to be with you. The eyes that you've looked into, the face that you've looked into as we ate together, as we walked together, not abandoning you and sending another that you do not know. So, it's my opinion that he, when he ascended, he ascended in the flesh. 
And he took up his seat at the right hand of power. Remember when Stephen is being stoned and uh, is being uh, executed and the devils have done their duty and so as they start to leave, his spiritual eyes are opened and he says, I see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power. So the Lord Jesus has come. He sat down on the fountain, as it were, of power. The Spirit of God, our Father then sent the Spirit of God through Jesus, and it comes to us, how shall I say, it comes to us um, in power, but as the Lord Jesus. So, so he comes to us in power. And it couldn't happen until he goes there and sits down on that seat and, and takes our humanity with him. So now that spirit, which was only a companion in the Old Testament, now is in our very hearts. It comes through his humanity, his flesh. Through those channels, it comes to our humanity in a way it never could be. That made any sense. So, so the power of God comes to us as the Lord Jesus Christ. It seems to me then that the Lord Jesus cannot return. He cannot, and, and Paul says in Corinthians, um, he will remain seated on that seat of power until all the work is accomplished. So, it, it seems to me that the Christians who are just kind of living their lives and waiting for the sky to crack will wait forever because he's not going to come until the work is done. He's not going to come and do the work. Remember the scripture says, I was going to read all this to you, but uh, I'm still going to read more scriptures to you. But, um, Jesus says to the disciples, when he's ascending, he says, go to Jerusalem and wait until you receive power. Power. Remember when the woman with the hemorrhage for 12 years touched the hem of his cloak? And the scripture says, power proceeded out of him to accomplish the marvelous healing. Several other times it says all the people were gathered around the door in the evening, and there was power present for healing. And he says, go to Jerusalem and wait until you receive that power so that you can do the very things that I've done. It's the same power. Maybe. So if he gets up off the seat, it seems to me then the power is withdrawn because it's coming to us because he's on the seat of power. And there's some evidence, Paul says, when all things are accomplished, the Spirit of God will be withdrawn. I don't know about there are other places that say He will abide with us forever. So it seems to me that we have to conclude that the work of the Lord to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth is going to be done by us who have been given the power Those who are waiting for the sky to crack and the Lord to come and establish the kingdom will wait forever and will not be part of it. But some way the enemy has filled us with his own presence. He makes us lackadaisical. lackadaisical. He causes us not to believe it and not to be interested. He causes us to be more interested in His world than we are in the Lord Jesus' world. And so for 2,000 years, Satan's kingdom has remained relatively untouched, unharmed. Let's look at another scripture.
Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares, which are weeds, among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. The slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your land? How then does it have tares? Sorry, 28. And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No. For while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them, but allow both to grow together until the harvest or until the end of the age. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. Many traditional believers who believe in predestination think that in any crowd of people, there are some people who are predetermined to go to heaven and some people who are predetermined to be lost. And that's what the wheat and the tares are about. It's not about that, brothers and sisters. The enemy has sown unclean spirits in our bodies and minds. Jesus says in uh, John 14, 30, I will not be speaking with you much longer, for the ruler of this world is coming. And he has nothing in me. So Jesus refers to Satan as the ruler of this world. When the Pharisees refer to Jesus as Beelzebub, they say he casts out demons because he is the ruler of the demons. And Jesus says that's uh, nothing could be further from the truth. A house divided by a house divided against itself cannot stand. So, <clears throat> Jesus refers to the kingdom of Satan as a kingdom that's so carefully knit together, so well organized, that it keeps the whole world under control. Then Jesus says, I was going to read all these scriptures to you, but I'm kind of fumbling around with that it takes too much time. Then Jesus says, if, if I cast out unclean spirits by the finger of God, then you know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. So we have a situation where we're all living in Satan's life, in Satan's kingdom, the kingdom of death, the kingdom of illness and disease, the kingdom of poverty and want, the kingdom of fear and depression, the kingdom of lust and gluttony, the kingdom of on and on and on. We all live in it. But Jesus says, when somebody does a supernatural act that's from the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven has come down at that moment to that place. Do you understand? At that moment, at that place, and the work of the kingdom of heaven is being done. So I want to suggest to you that the people who say the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, is already here, are wrong. And I want to suggest to you that those who say, say it's not here at all are also incorrect. I want to suggest to you that the kingdom of God appears like a flash, and then the kingdom of darkness covers it. I think the most prominent example of that is the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God came. The power of darkness was broken and just blown back. It was like a nuclear event. The kingdom of darkness was driven back with such force that all the apostles and many others did miraculous works. The, the, the devil's work in our hearts to cause us to want to 
accumulate and hold on to it because it's ours was just blasted and they sold what they had and brought it at the brought it and laid it at the apostles' feet and they had everything in common. They loved one another, they helped one another, they healed one another, and the kingdom of darkness was just blown back, and the kingdom of heaven came down in that place at that time. And it was in Jerusalem. Now many would argue that Jerusalem is one of the most godless places on earth, as far as the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned. So what happened? Right, so I just want to suggest to you that the kingdom of darkness is far more effective, more thorough, more complete than any of us ever dreamed. And I further want to suggest to you that its timbers that its structures are living beings. Let me just get back to that. I didn't want to pass up the week of tears. I've often prayed to the Lord, why do unclean spirits fight so hard not to come out when they're being cast out by a believer? This passage of week of tears indicates that when they're cast out, only humans can cast them out, but there are angels waiting to gather them. You understand? I'm not sure. But when, when we're casting them out, they're, they're seeing the Lord's angels, which probably look like angels of fire to them, just waiting. Come on, you're going to the place. I don't know what it says. The parable says to the, that the angels wait till the end of the age and then gather them. Angels can't cast them out of us, only people can cast them out of themselves and out of each other. But when we cast them out, their, their power is broken and the angels take them wherever the angels take them. Maybe that's why they're so... They actually are fearful of coming out. Anyway. <clears throat> so the kingdom of darkness, I want to suggest, and, I, and I'm willing to talk to any of you privately if you have a different idea. The structures, the beams, the walls are living creatures. I don't know, it might be something else. Maybe they have devil wall board or devil concrete. <clears throat> the scripture says that when Satan entered in, not only did death enter into us, and into every animal, and into every plant, but also entered into the ground, so that the ground no longer produces vegetation and fruit on its own. We have, to, we have to make it produce vegetation and fruit by the sweat of our brows. So something, some living power entered into everything of this earth and took it over for the kingdom of darkness. So then that leaves us with the question, how will the kingdom of heaven be established? How? How can the kingdom of heaven be established in this massive organization of living beings? Did I frame that right? Yeah. What are we going to do to get the kingdom of heaven to begin to be established and not, not a flash here or a flash there and then be covered by darkness, but be, to be established and to be sustained and to move outward. The scripture says, of the increase of his kingdom, there will be no end. It, there will be no end to its growth, its increase. But it kind of ain't doing it right now. Still everybody's dying, still everybody suffers disease. Alright, so this is, this is the nugget of what I'm wanting to say this morning. The kingdom of darkness resides in Rich Frazier and in each of you. And the kingdom of heaven resides in Rich Frazier and in each of you. And the Lord Jesus has given me power and 
you power to begin to side with the kingdom of heaven and war against the kingdom of darkness. We are not waiting for the Lord to come back and establish His kingdom. He has sent forth power into our hearts, and we are to respond to that power by establishing His kingdom first in our own hearts and minds, and in the hearts and minds of others. The kingdom of heaven is a place where people are healed. It's a place where death does not rule. It's a place where depression and discouragement does not rule. It's a place where life rules and health rules and peace and prosperity, happiness, and a vision for the future. We bring the kingdom of heaven by working at getting the kingdom of darkness out of us so that we become individuals of the kingdom of heaven and then working outward from that we become individuals who begin to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth by, by helping others, praying over them, helping them, teaching them and delivering them. So we have been waiting for the Lord to do His work and He's been waiting for us and calling us to do the work, and it's been a standoff. Lord, help me get that point. So, so the kingdom of heaven could be established in this church in a way that would never be closed off again by darkness. If the individuals in this church lay hold of that power that's in them and war against the power of darkness that's in them and establish the kingdom of heaven, in our own hearts and minds, in our own lives. The coming of the kingdom of heaven and the establishment of the kingdom of heaven lies in our hands. It's up to us, not the Lord Jesus. He's done His work. On the cross He says, it is finished. I've done it. I've done my part. When He says, wait until you receive power, power to do what? Power to come to church? Power to pray for the kings to win? Power to pray for the heat to lose? Sorry. Power for what? Scripture says, I will establish my church, and the gates of hell will not over will not prevail against it, will, will not overpower. Now the term gates strangely means gates. It means gates that open. Why would the Lord choose that term? The concept is the gates open and the devils rush out into this world. And he said, that rushing will not prevail against my kingdom. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just struggling here. Let's see if I can conclude. Some way it's in your pastor's heart to consider his number one mission to be himself, not you, not the church. It's in your pastor's heart that the, that the, the biggest priority, the, the most important thing I can give myself to it's my own heart and mind. I'm getting that stuff out of me. And because your pastor believes that, those of you who come here on a regular basis begin to believe that too. And many of you pray deliverance over yourselves and come here on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights and get deliverance prayed over you. I tell you that these four walls will become the kingdom of heaven. Our poor Darcy is part of that. She will be healed. 
Harold has got a marvelous healing in his body. Sheila will be healed. Carrie Alanise will be healed. Joey Taylor will be healed. The kingdom of heaven will be established in these four walls, and the works of the kingdom will be done in these four walls because a small group of people, however large or small it is, have considered their own hearts and minds and the call of the Lord on their own hearts and minds. We will not do any of it by rushing forth and trying to minister to people. You get that? We will not. We will fail utterly if we rush forth and try to minister to people. Fail utterly. But if there's any of you who will partner with me to establish the kingdom of heaven in your own heart and mind, the kingdom of heaven will be established inside these four walls in the most marvelous way that's ever been seen. I truly believe that. Ashamba. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and save you. And the Lord's loving kindness be upon you forever and ever. Amen.